like to welcome to Into the Fire, three-time Olympian, elite Aussie runner and super nice person, Tamsin Manu. Or as everyone knows her best, Tamsin Lewis. Nice meeting, Tamsin. Do you know what? The best thing that you just said then was the nice bit. I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good. Now, before we get on to all the things you've achieved in your sporting career, what was the young Tamsin like? Did you play any sports growing up? And how early did you take athletics seriously? Oh, I love this question. And I love this question because I wasn't your typical track and field athlete. When I was about your age, I was a skateboarder. Oh, yeah. I had an older brother. And so for me, um, we lived at the top of a, a court. And so days were spent kicking the football, playing cricket, trying to, the stumps were the fire hydrant, um, yeah. skateboarding, every sport that was on offer at my school. I took part in rounders, you know, netball, um, you know, I got to high school and I still did a lot of the sports. I did water polo, softball, anything that was sporty and our school put on, I put my hand up to be a part of. And I think um, the only sport my coach stopped me from doing um, was when I was in about year eight. He said, oh, you probably should stop netball because of the knees. Yep. Um, but everything else I, I had a go at. Wow. Sounds like you're a pretty sporty kid. Yeah, I came from a sporty family, but I... You know, I've got kids now and I just think that sport's such a wonderful, wonderful thing to do for the kids because it teaches them teamwork, it teaches them patience, it teaches them discipline. Um, and I just love seeing kids out there having fun and being healthy and active. I think it's wonderful sport. So I love it whenever ever my children come home and say they want to be part of a sports team. Um, I'm, I'm in, I'm all for it. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Your mother, Caroline, was a high jumper six times national champ to be precise and your dad made the semis in the 200 meter at the 1986 olympics you were destined to be a champion weren't you <laughs> if i was a if i was a horse i would have been an expensive foal you reckon, yeah, I reckon. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah no i um i think sporting genes yeah they definitely run through my blood and my my granddad played for richmond um my other granddad loved cricket um my nana loves sport as well so I think for me it was just I was destined to do sport just didn't know what level I'm sure my parents weren't sure when they had me but um you know I didn't do the same event as them which made it a bit easy but I did find the same sport as them and I'm so glad that I did because track and field is one of those sports where I guess you don't make as much money as a lot of other sports stars can um and it's not the sport in Australia that's front and center on the newspaper all the time but when you retire and you look back on a career that you, in track and field, you realise that it was truly global sport and you meet people from all different cultures and backgrounds. And um, for me, I think I was blessed to be able to um, go into the sport that my parents did as well. Yeah, not every person gets to say they went to the Olympics, do they? No, and that's true. And I think as you get older, you start to respect that a lot more. Yeah. Now, you were chosen in the Commonwealth Games at the tender age of 15. Do you look back at that moment with fond memories, even though you didn't end up competing? Or do you think it was way too much pressure to place someone, to place on someone so young? Oh, what a fabulous question. Um, I think a bit of column A, a bit of column B. I think that it was the catalyst for my career yeah. because um, I was really disappointed to not be able to compete when I was over there. It was a pretty tough senior team to be a part of. The um, girls were quite clicky and I, I was quite a young 15, 16 year old when I got over there. So um, for me, it was a baptism of fire. I learned that track and field isn't all, you know, rose colored glasses. It's not always about having fun. Sometimes you just have to set that goal and the girls are going to be hard on you when you take to the track to compete against uh, them. But for me, even though it was really tough, I think that it was a really vital part in what made my career so long I was able to come back from those Commonwealth Games and even though the next four years were really tough I didn't make another senior team until the following Commonwealth Games yeah. um, but I think it taught me to make sure that from that point on I did the sport for the right reasons and I still held on to that youthful enthusiasm that I had the love of the sport as well as trying to be really successful at it as well but it was now I look back on it it's a really, really young age, 15, 16. I look at my nephews who have just turned 16. And I think, wow, I was traveling the world. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm not quite sure I'd like sending my kids overseas <laughs> at that age. But what do you do? Like when you make a team when you're so young, it's it's a really yeah. special thing to represent your country and you never know how many times you're going to do it. So 
had to take the opportunity when it um, came up. Yeah, that was a great answer. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Now, as you progressed up the age groups, you moved from the shorter sprints to the 800 metres. What made you decide that change? Because it was a good one. <laughs> um, I often say that you don't choose the 800, it chooses you. It's a super hard event. Um, and looking back on it, sometimes I wish I'd stayed with the 400 metres. I trained alongside an athlete you may know, Kathy Freeman, and she was so good. And I remember leading into the national championships at 1998. I just liked winning and she was going to be running the 400 and I thought I can't beat her so I'll run the 800 it just made sense to me and my coach we hadn't done the training for it but he said okay we'll give it a go and I won my first national title um, after about three races at the distance so my unfortunately my path was already made for me yeah. once I'd done that but I think if I you know maybe if I'd thought it through, I would have stayed at the 400 for a bit longer because Kathy Freeman was exceptional. I think she was yeah. a once in a lifetime athlete that, you know, um, pretty hard to compete against. But running the 800, I feel really tough event. Um, I had the speed of the sprinter, but I had that ability to be able to hold that speed for a little yeah, bit exactly. longer than the average sprinter. So hence the 800 probably suited me. And I loved how there was tactics involved. You know, you had to be really physical and rough to hold your spot. Um, every race was quite different. You could go in with a race plan and it could be thrown out the window completely in the first 100 metres because everybody else is running a bit different and you have to think on your feet. So there was a lot that I loved about the 800 metres. The training was super hard, though. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. It's like that event was made for you, wasn't it? I do, I do love the lactic training, the training where you feel like being sick and then you do another rep. So I was a bit crazy like that, but I did love that sort of work. <laughs> yeah. In 1999, you set an Australian indoor record, knowing that athletics is all about being better yourself, about beating yourself. You must have been over the moon at this time. Yeah, I was. I um, I think 1999 for me was one of those transition years where I was starting to go from the junior into the senior years. And that's often a really hard time for athletes. So for me, anything that was a success was something that I had to make sure that I enjoyed and um, then reset the goals for the bigger task. And um, 1999 was the year before a home Olympics. So there was a lot to yeah. look forward to. You couldn't rest on your laurels and just um, sit back. You had to tick off the goals and then move to the next one. Yeah, it would have been a bit nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. Everything was nerve wracking around then. Like, but you know what? When I was training next to, next to Catherine um, Freeman, I knew that, well, whatever I had in terms of nerve was never as bad as what she had to deal with. So it made it a bit easier thinking like that. Yeah, I reckon she had quite a bit of pressure on her. <laughs> yeah, she had a heap of pressure, but, you know, she was a wonderful athlete and, you know, we all saw what she did in um, Sydney. Well, you will have to watch the um, tapes because yeah. you weren't alive when she ran. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I mean, it's one of those things that I think it's it's generational. Even my children can sit there and watch it. And I know my daughter at school was asked who her um, female inspiration was for International Women's Day. And she said, Kathy. So I think that um, even though it was 2000 and kids today wouldn't have seen it live, their parents will keep showing them. Exactly. It was after this you struggled for a while, going back to the 400 metre and also being part of that so-called controversy, controversy surrounding the relay. Was it mm -hmm. all the media surrounding this and the pressure of expectation on you that made you take a break from the sport? Um, oh, I didn't like 2006. It was my home Commonwealth Games and I should have loved it. The MCG to me is the sporting mecca of the world yeah. because I grew up in Melbourne. I grew up on a, a sporting diet of AFL. And so um, I watched many a grand finals there and I was so excited when um, the Commonwealth Games were announced in Melbourne and going, the track and field was going to be at the MCG. But I guess um, I guess it was one of those things where the media built up and uh, a, a rivalry between me and Yana and it wasn't healthy. It wasn't great. And it was probably one of those things that I didn't really enjoy. Um, Yana and I get along fine and um, I, I honestly I love racing people like Yana world champion Kathy Freeman you know Olympic champion I loved racing them because I think that it's rubbing shoulders with these yeah rubbing shoulders yeah. with um, those sort of people it brings the best out in you you know so I'm grateful that I had time to race against these athletes I'm disappointed in how 2006 played out but 
I think it made me a better person. It made me realize that I had to be more careful with how I use my words. Your words are so powerful. And if you're just chatting and laughing and having a joke on, in the media, they can put it in print media and it looks so different. So I learned a lot. And um, I guess I became a better person from that, that, that period of my life. Yeah, definitely. Now, I also have to bring up the media attention you got about posting a in a bikini before the Athens Olympics. Seriously, do you see... Do they see what runners wear? It's not that different. It must have been no, so incredibly hard to deal with the negativity that the media can bring. Um, do you know, I think if I had my time again, I wouldn't have done those pictures, but I needed, um, they they were a way to, to make some money in terms of, and then I could go overseas and compete. Because while you were overseas competing, you weren't able to work and there was not a lot of money in my sport. So yeah. I guess it's not really my personality, those sort of shots. Certainly not a model. And um, I'm a bit of a dag, really. A bit of the oh. homebody always in tracksuit pants. So <laughs> I, um, but I agree. I think when we run, we run in lycra. We do not run in, you know, there's, it leaves little to the imagination. So, but we're fit and we're strong and we're athletic. Exactly. And I think that that's something that should be celebrated because um, I like to think that young girls celebrate that sort of body, athletes' bodies yeah. who work really hard, but they eat well and they're healthy. Um, and and everybody looks so different in this world. So I think you celebrate yeah. all types of bodies. But it was disappointing the way that they, um, I think I was in Belgium at a race and I was rooming with a, a really fast athlete, Lauren Hewitt. And I think the newspaper had said something about me being out of shape with that photo. And I thought that was really irresponsible because young people should never um, have to look at an athlete. And I've never been fat in terms of the normal society but when they called me fat in the media I think that was really irresponsible because young girls shouldn't be seeing that because you know what I might not have had the body type I was meant to have trying to run 800 meters because I'd been injured but I was still a young female and I was trying my best and I was trying to make the best version of myself and I don't think you should ever criticize a female's body yeah the media can be pretty unfair sometimes <laughs> sometimes and then they can be amazing as well and lift you up exactly <laughs> like you said you got to run with the famous Kathy Freeman a champion of your sport what was it like to be around her is she as nice as person as everyone says the best she is one of my favorite humans that I've ever met she's so humble um she's so gracious she's so um giving um she's so she's got a heart of gold and um I just love being in her company um as we get older I love it even more because I think she's an intelligent person she's um she's got great stories to tell but she's all, also somebody that I don't know you spend time with her and you walk away feeling great so I think people like that are the people that you want to surround yourself with but you know apart from what she did on the track which was just phenomenal I think Kathy Freeman, the person's the person that I love the most, you know, she's just a wonderful human. And, and I think as a mentor, as a youngster who got to spend time with her on teams, I think when I was 15 or 16, I have wonderful memories of hanging out with her in the Commonwealth Game Village. And um, she was the athlete that really inspired me to dare to dream. And she lit that spark in me that sort of taught me that self-belief is everything. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. Just keep believing in yourself and those dreams will come closer. Yeah, she sounds like an amazing person. Maybe next time you see her, tell her to come on the show. <laughs> I will. I'll tell her. I'll let her know. <laughs> sounds awesome. Now you won three gold medals at the Commonwealth Games in the relay. Athletics is a very individual sport and it's really the only time you get to feel that amazing team feeling. It must have been awesome and seeing that flag go up as the anthem play must have been pretty special. Oh, I loved running relays. Being in that call room, which is the room you go into before your race with your teammates, I'd have loved to have been in the team sport. I really would have. Yeah. Um, I think when you retire, it's those moments with your teammates that you really reflect on and enjoy the most. Um, and I had some wonderful relay teammates. I think 2002 for me, the Commonwealth Games, where we won that gold medal, where Catherine had been injured and she came back into the team to help us out because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to field a team. And she came in and ran brilliantly off hardly any training and off an injury. And then Yana was coming through um, into that senior rank. She'd just come off winning the 400 hurdles at the Commonwealth Games and she had a bright future. And 
Lauren Hewitt was the girl who I grew up racing against from primary school age. So it was just, it was really special. And there were so many teams that I was a part of where just really fantastic Australian strong women. Um, I was able to learn from them, call them my friends and, and really get down and race really hard with them to try and achieve, you know, the goal of running well and running fast and getting a medal for Australia. So it's pretty special. Yeah, and Relay's always one of the best ones to watch for me. I mean, except for 100. Everyone loves 100, don't they? <laughs> Everyone loves the 100. The 100 metres at the Olympics is pretty special. But then they finish it with the 4 by 400s for a reason because they are fantastic ways to finish a program with. Yeah, it is. So it, so it in a career that had, so in a career that had so many highlights, I mean, 18 national titles is enormous and I'm sure some disappointments. Do you ever look back and regret anything? Because you shouldn't. You're a star. But I bet there's always some things you wish you did differently. Oh, that's lovely. Um, you try, I, I have a motto of trying not to look in the rearview mirror because I think once you do that, you spiral out of control and you can be bitter. I'm the kind of person that likes to learn from any of the mistakes I've made and hopefully be able to give back to other people um, so that they don't make the same mistakes. I think yeah. every mistake that you make, if you can learn from them, they actually end up defining who you are. Um, and I quite like the person I've ended up as. Yes, there were a lot of things that I would change if I had my time again. There's lots, plenty. I couldn't even, if I had to write them down, the list would be quite long. Um, you know, I said things that I, I wish I hadn't have said. I, um, I made decisions with my career that I think I should have made different ones. But honestly, if I think about it if I made any of those decisions and changed them I may not be where I am today and I'm really happy where I am today I love my family I think I I love where I live um and I love what I'm doing with my life so and I think yeah. that I've it also allows me to have empathy for the next generation coming through in track and field I think if everything was easy and smooth um on your path to success then you wouldn't be able to relate to others. And I think that because I had so many low moments in my career and I had to keep picking myself back up, I feel like that makes me relatable. Um, and I think being relatable allows me to have conversations with today's athletes and hopefully be able to help them just a little bit. Yeah, and you should be proud of where you are now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> good. You're on the other end of the media now and you do an awesome job. Do you think about those negative journalists and try not to be like that? Oh, 100%. I don't want to be negative. I think that's what I mean by the things that I had go wrong in my career. They give me empathy. And I think when I'm watching Olympic Games and I'm sitting next to the great Bruce McAvaney, who's just a yeah. wonderful human and so good at what he does, I think there's always a way to tell someone's story in a positive light, um, even if they've had the worst race of their career. They'll know that they've had the worst race of their career, but you can still put a positive spin on it. You can say, oh, they'll be really disappointed with that run, but I know that they'll go back to the drawing board and they'll be able to learn from this. Like a lot of athletes, if you look through their careers, the catalyst for them being great has been the disappointment. So there's yeah. always something positive to take from a, a negative result in a race. Yeah, that's so true. Like you said, you got to share the stage with the big man himself, Bruce McAvaney. What was he like in person? Oh, he's a star, absolute star. Like, I mean, honestly, I feel so blessed. I had mentors in athletics that were just fabulous. And then I've gone into the media and I've got the best of all time, you know? Yeah. Bruce McAvaney is my mentor and, and he's wonderful. He's so giving of his time. He, um, you know, even if I need anything or if I'm feeling a bit flat or I, or I feel like I've lost direction, if I send him a message, he always gets back to me and he always has such good advice. Um, isn't he just a brilliant commentator? What you see yes. is what you get. He has genuine passion. He has genuine care. He loves watching everybody compete and he really remembers them and he he almost, he does the journey with them. You can see it in his, yeah. in his passion when he calls. And I, I wish people sometimes had the camera on him as well, because you can really see that passion that he has and that, that, that wish he has for the Australians to do well. And i um, very lucky to be learning from the best. He is the best, isn't he? Yep. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not sure you're not too far away. I reckon oh, you're, no. you're I reckon well on your way to a career. Quite a long way from him, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to watch your career because I think you're going places. Oh, maybe. <laughs> when you met Graham, did you know much about cricket and how did you meet? 
Did you know he was a cricketer? Uh, yes, I love sport and I have an older brother, so I loved cricket. Um, I grew up in the 80s and so the 80s, they had the cool one day outfits and I was a big fan of the West Indian team. I love Sir Viv Richards. Um, Alan Border was an absolute legend. Oh, so yeah, no, I've loved cricket for a long time. So yeah, no, I knew who he was. I knew he was a good wicketkeeper and um, and one of the, my favourite things and favourite memories has been being able to watch um, the last part of his career being able to go to the 2009 ashes and sit in Edgbaston and cheer along with the Barmy army yelling things out at him and um yeah. it was brilliant it was really it was wonderful being able to watch him compete yeah that would have been pretty special well Tamsin you're an awesome person and a star in Australian sport it's been an absolute privilege chatting to you and you should be proud of the athlete you were and the person you are now thanks for your time Oh, thank you so much. I'm so privileged being on this with you. Thank you for inviting it's me. Awesome on. to have you on. Yeah, <laughs> thanks.